Hello again. So in this video, we're going to be dealing with linear algebra, and we're going to determine whether the vectors are not linear combinations. But before I get into this one, this video is, um, is it's part two, right after the first video I just did. And in that video, I, I'm thinking you guys might have a couple questions. I'm going to do this one in just one second. I just want to go down here and explain this K1 and K2 real quick. So in the previous video, I, I worked all this out. Now, unfortunately, I, I neglected to tell you guys about the K1 and K2. Um, everything about this, the solution was correct. The only thing is I just I neglected to tell you how the, how this actually looks. So what I'm actually writing is u, or this vector u, is actually... Uh, so you're going to have um, u1, u2, and u3. And then this is going to be v1, v2, and v3. Now u1 is just this component right here. It's 1, which I put right here, 1. And then the next component, 2, is going to be that one right there. So it's going to be u2 right here. And then u3, and that's the same thing for v1, v2, and v3. I just I wrote it like this, and I didn't really explain where that uh, where those are coming from, but you'll see it written like this in your textbook or you might or you might not well you I don't know I don't know what textbook you have so anyhow you'll also this is the part that I didn't put in here k1 and k2 and this is going to be equal to uh, w1 w2 and w3 so yeah so this is actually the way it's written out if you wanted to see how these are plugged into there so anyhow, I hope that clears up any questions you might have had about that. Uh, oh, and you're probably looking at this guy and saying, well, in here I don't see K1 and K2. I know, I took it out. You don't need it. Uh, because automatically you know that uh, this value is going to get multiplied by this one. So first thing you have to just make sure is that these, these two match up. And what I mean by that is this matrix is a three-row by two columns. This one is a two row by one column. And so these inner values have to match up. And if they do match up, then you can multiply it, which is what you end up doing. And then you have these right here, these outer values, and that's what the new uh, matrix is going to result in. So this is going to, if you multiply those two together, you're going to end up with a three by uh, one matrix. So it's three rows by one column. So anyhow, now that we got that, let's go ahead and solve this problem over here. So here we're doing this one. We're, we're going to determine whether the vectors are not linear combinations. So here I change the values of this vector. And what we want to know is, are, is u, the vector u, and the vector v, are these, can I multiply these by some scalar uh, in order to get w? So is w, the vector w, is this a linear combination of vector u and vector v. So let's go ahead and solve that. So this is for the previous one. I'm just going to delete all this. We don't need it anymore. Oh, I should have deleted this first, huh? You know what? I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm just going to copy these guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's copy them. Let's bring them down here. Okay, so these are the guys we're going to be dealing with. So I want to know, are these linear combinations? Whoops. Let me go back up. So first thing is, let's set up this matrix. So the first one we're going to put in is U. So it's going to be uh, 1, 2, or it's going to be, this is the form we're going to follow, U, uh, the scalar K1 times the vector U plus the scalar k2 times the vector v is equal to, well, the question is it equal to vector w? So now let's find that out. <coughs> and we're going to plug in these values. So first thing is um, vector u. So that's going to be 1, 2, negative 1. Uh, then we're going to do v, which is 6, 4, and 2. And I'm going to leave off K1 and K2. Oh, actually, 
we're going to turn this into an augmented matrix. Now we're going to be testing uh, vector w. So we're going to enter in these values 4, negative 1, and 8. And now just as before we're going to do row operations to um, to reduce this down to row echelon form. Now you could just use a calculator and do this really quick. But I'm going to work this out for you. Uh, so first thing is I'm going to add row 1 to row 3. So I'm going to leave the first two rows alone. So the first one is going to be 2, 6, 4, 4, negative 1. So adding, and now here I'm going to do is row 3 plus row 1. So let's see, um, negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. 2 plus 6 is 8. And then 8 plus 4 is 12. So now let's continue on. Uh, since when we do, since we're reducing this down, we're doing reduced row echelon form, we want to have zeros underneath the leading one. So after I've done this, now I want to multiply uh, row 1 by negative 2 and add it to row, I mean, I'm sorry. I want to multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add it to row 2. So we're going to do row 2 minus 2 times row 1. And I'm going to leave the other guys alone. I'm going to do it one at a time just to make sure that I don't lose anybody. 0, 8, and 12. And when you do these, you want to um, uh, you want to work first on the first leading one and work that one until you get zeros underneath it. And then you go to the next one and so on and so forth. So here we're doing row 2 minus 2 times row 1. So 2 times negative, I mean uh, 1 times negative 2, adding it to 2, you're going to get 0. Here we're doing 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12, plus 4, which is going to give us a negative, a negative 8. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> then we're going to have 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8, um, plus negative 1 gives us a negative 9. So now, now we're here, let's scroll down a bit more. Need a little more space. Not too much. Okay, so now I'm working on this guy's on this one right here. So I've already gotten the zeros underneath the leading one. Now I want to work on this guy. So I want to get zeros underneath uh, this one. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add row two to row three. So I'm leaving all the other ones the same. So it's one, six, four, zero, negative eight negative 9, and so 0 plus 0 is 0, uh, negative 8 plus 8 is 0, negative 9 plus 12 is 3. <coughs> and what I did here is I said row 3 plus row 2. Now we have a problem. You'll notice that I have 0, 0, 3. Now, if you keep reducing this down, you're going to get it down to a, a diagonal of 1. So you're going to get a 1 here, a 1 here, and you're going to get a 1 here. And that would be wrong. Because right now I have it in an, as an augmented matrix. <clears throat> because these are your constants actually that you're solving for. And since you have a 0 and a 0 here, what this 0 actually represents is K1 times U3 plus K2 times, whoops, sorry, that's that's a V, K2 times uh, V3, which we're checking to see if it's equal to, um, not, not the vector, if it's equal to W3, which is this value here. Now, I think we can see what's happening here. We know that K1, well, we don't know what K1 is yet because we haven't solved for it. But we know u3 <coughs> here is 0. Uh, k2, we don't know what that is just yet. And v3, v3 is 0. So, and here, w3 is equal to 3. So this is where we have a problem, because we can't multiply uh, this scalar k1 into 0 to get any value. Same for k2, since these are always, will always be 0 plus 0 
that will always be a 0 and that will never be equal to 3 and that right there tells you that this is an inconsistent system and that u uh, vector let me scroll down a bit Oops. we know that vector u and oops and vector v are not oops sorry I said this backwards. What? Uh, let me rephrase that. We know that uh, the vector w that I gave you earlier is not a linear combination of vector v. And whoops, and vector u. So um, we know that uh, vector w is not a linear combination of vector v or, I mean, a vector v and vector u. So this system is inconsistent because, well, because you can never get this. This will never work. So. Um, that's basically how you solve this. So I, I hope this helped you out. I hope it made sense. Um, I'll be putting out a few more videos on this topic, especially since I don't see, well, but I haven't found too many examples that I liked. So here you go. Hope you liked it. Uh, good luck in your guys' classes. And if you get a chance to, uh, feel free to make a nice donation to me. All right. Thanks a lot. You guys have a great time in your classes. Bye.